with Paige Flat from Kentucky. The Gatorade Track and Field National Athlete of the Year. Tonight is the all sports dinner here in Los Angeles. Paige, we're gonna drag you into some deep waters tonight, okay? Uh, yes, sir, sounds good. <laughs> First off, the 800, it's a big man's event. It's a big boy's event, you know. There's, there's no messing around that event. Why did you choose that event? You know, really, the story behind the 800 is I, I uh, ran my first track race, hated it, didn't like it, uh, and I was going to quit. Going into the second one, coach threw me in the 800 back in sixth grade as a middle schooler, and I won it. And uh, after that, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll stick around. Maybe I can get a few wins. I like winning. So I stuck around for it and just kind of took off from there, never looked back. Never looked back, and you've had an amazing season. This year, we've had no one in high school track ever in any track event dominate an all-time list like you did this year. Five of the top seven all-time in history in an event that undergoes very few revisions over the years because it's so tough. Mm -hmm. What was the big goal coming in this year? I know obviously the national record. Anything else? Just just to take over. You know, I, I was I was tired of being just one of the top guys. I wanted to be the top guy. I wanted when people think track and field high school or any level that I'm a part of, I want them to think Cade Flat. And so it was just to take over and, and just, you know, get people talking about me. You come in on my, my radar your freshman year. You already showed a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. Of course, then we had COVID hit, and that took right. away a lot of yes. opportunities for people, yes. in a sense. Uh, not much happened sophomore year, junior year, here, and a couple things going on. Right. And I thought to myself, wow, I wonder how he'll do as a senior if, if he's going to have that, bot, that fire. Right. Lo and behold, man, you were on fire the whole year. How did you, was there ever a problem with motivation during those COVID years, in a sense? Um, no, not really. Uh, when COVID hit my sophomore year, Kentucky shut down completely, and I just had a big freshman year, and I was, I was really excited to get back into things, but Kentucky was shut down. I couldn't train, so I took all sophomore year off. Uh, most people don't know that, so I wasn't training at all. I was just being a, just a kid, whatever. And uh, then junior year kind of came back into things, and, and me and my coach tried a few different things out. Uh, it was, I was successful, I would say, but I wasn't where I wanted to be. Uh, and then we just made all the adjustments my senior year, and that's what happened. I think coming into Indoor Nationals your senior year, most people still didn't know who Kate Flat was. And that was the day mm -hmm. that everyone said, whoa, who's this kid? Right. And that was a memorable 800 with Colin Solomon, mm -hmm. the, the ultra memorable quotes afterwards <laughs> in a sense. Yes, sir. I think a lot of people at first thought, this, kid, this kid's very arrogant. But then they say you back it up and you respect the sport and you respect the event. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit more about what makes Kate Flat tip. Yeah, you know, and that's that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go in and make a big splash. Uh, you know, like I said in my interviews, and I, and I wholeheartedly believe it, I knew I was going to go into that race. I was telling my coach in warm-ups, I said, there's not a kid in high school beating me today. And so that was just the thing. And, you know, I just wanted, I just wanted people to let, you know, let them see who Cade Flat is. You know, I, I respect, I, uh, I humble myself daily in practice, uh, you know, and I believe in myself. And why not walk around like you're the best? Why not walk around like you're the best ever? Why not, if you get on the line thinking that you're going to get beat or you're not the best up there, then, then you've already lost. And especially, you've, you've already lost with me if you think like that, so. Most kids don't think that way. You had an incredible year this year. Mm -hmm. How much of it you think was because you think that way? I think the mentality was everything. That, that was, you know, that was one of the, only changes that I made, it was just, uh, you know, I was, I was tired of being, like I said, a top guy. I wanted to be the top guy. I, would, I you know, when things don't go your way, it was just like, you know, give it all you got all the time and practice uh, back in November before I was coming off of 150, struggling. I was the second fastest kid in my class. I was saying, hey, now this is what national champions do. National champion, national champion, national champion, rep after rep after rep back in November. Before I ran a time, before I proved it to myself, before I proved it to anybody else. And so that's that's really what happened. And I just kept going with it. And then eventually that I ran that national championship. I ran that time and it was best ever. Best ever, best ever, best ever. Every single rep of every workout. Uh, you can ask my coach, you know, every day, best ever. That was the saying, it was written everywhere in my room, in my notes, uh, you know, it was just, it's a, it's a mental game. Uh, if you can go there mentally, you can go there physically. 1996 California State Prelims, Michael Granville sets the national record, 146.45. No one's touched it since. It's been there forever. Uh -huh. You came, and no one, like, most people haven't even come close to it. You come up this year with what, 146.48, 146.50, 146.53. People are sort of texting me saying, 
Is there like a shield around Michael's record? It's not going down. Yeah. Uh, how frustrating was that? How, how, I mean, what, how were you internalizing those close calls? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was frustrated. My first, my like first attempt when I ran a 146.51 or whatever. I was frustrated. It was right there. There was just a few things in that race that you know, took, took a hop step. That first 200, just getting out of traffic, that cost me the national record right there. It's, that time is absolutely nothing in between those, uh, in between those two times. Uh, and then frustrations kept kind of growing at New Balance National. Some things didn't go my way, and I got off on the splits and things like that. Uh, but didn't hit it again. But really, I've I've put it to rest after prelims uh, at U.S. Champs. Uh, that prelim race, I ran 146.53, and I, I was I swear to you, I was jogging that. I swear I could have ran 145 that day. Uh, I just after that first lap went half. First lap went through. I knew that I was going to be in the semi the next day, so I held back and I hit the splits on at 600. And I said, if I want the next record, I can go get it. But we're, we're saving. We got a race the next day. I was trying to get through the rounds and not chase that time there. I've seen people chase after times, and when they don't get it, and it's their last chance, and they don't get it, then they try it again. They'll find another race. Yeah. You didn't do that. Why not? You know, it's I've I've proved myself. Uh, I think I think that you know five of the six times you, you get that close so many times. I can you you can hit a date on a on a, any given day. Uh, it's just I was happy with my season. Of course, I wasn't satisfied. I wanted that best ever mark. I wanted my name on every heat sheet in the country. But it was I, I proved myself. Uh, my season was over. I uh, didn't want to extend it any longer than I had to because I got a big year next year. So even bigger. One of your biggest fans by the end of the season was Michael Granville. He really loved mm -hmm. the approach you took and how tenacious you were. Yeah. He was really impressed. You go into college now, different challenge. I'm assuming it's the same recipe, that focus, yes, that sir. confidence. Yes, sir. Taking it all with me. It's a, you know, same mentality. People ask me what's next, and I said just, just greatness. Continue to chase it. Uh, the best ever mark's coming. You know, my, my, my journey's not over yet. This is just the beginning. So I'm barely training right now. I wait till I get a, get a few more miles in me. NCAA, get ready for Kate Flat. That's yes, the sir. next stop. Thanks very much, Kate. Thanks Thank a lot. You.